Hello and welcome to another Royal Reviewer channel episode and today I'm going to be sharing with you three books which I have chosen from Pen and Sword. Right, let's just get straight into it. Now these books are books that I have chosen because I think that people these days are trying to fill in gaps in their knowledge of things that perhaps were not on the curriculum or perhaps not as in-depth as people would have liked and what people actually need in today's world. The first book that I have chosen is Heroes and Villains of the British Empire, Their Lives and Legends. This one is by Stephen Basdeo. So I will pop a picture to the side screen and I will read a little bit about what this is about. Obviously, I haven't read the whole books. That would be impossible, seeing as I've only just received them. Um, but I did want to tell you all about them. Maybe if you're interested, you can pop to the description box below and where I have linked to the pen and sword retailer themselves or from Amazon. From the 16th until the 20th century, British power and influence gradually expanded to cover one quarter of the world's surface. The common saying was that the sun never sets on the British Empire. What began as a largely entrepreneurial enterprise in the early modern period, with privately run joint stock trading companies, such as the East India Company, driving British commercial expansion, by the 19th century had become, especially after 1857, a state-run endeavour. Supported by a powerful military and navy, by the Victorian era, Britannia really did rule the waves. Heroes and Villains of the British Empire is the story of how the British Empire builders, such as Robert Clive, General Gordon and Lord Roberts of Kandahar, were represented and idealised in popular culture. The men who built the empire were often portrayed as possessing certain unique abilities which enabled them to serve their country in often inhospitable territories and spread what imperial ideologies saw as the benefits of the British Empire to supposedly uncivilised peoples in far-flung corners of the world. These qualities and abilities were athleticism, a sense of fair play, devotion to God and a fervent sense of duty and loyalty to the nation and the empire. Through the example of these heroes, people in Britain and children in particular were encouraged to sign up and serve the empire or in the words of Henry Newbolt, play up, play up and play the game. Yet this was not the whole story. While some writers were paid up imperial propagandists, other writers in England deserted the very idea of the British Empire. And in the 20th century, those who were once considered as heroic military men were condemned as racist rulers and exploitative empire builders. So like I said, it's really important in today's world when perhaps there may have been gaps in our understanding and knowledge of history when we were growing up. These, I think it's our responsibility to fill in those gaps as adults. And I think this book really does do that. I think it takes a really objective oversight of the British Empire and it takes account of everything. And it shows that there were heroes and of course villains. So it looks at the whole encompassing history. Stephen Basdeo is a cultural historian who has written several books for pen and sword on the mythology surrounding various heroes from the medieval period to the 19th century. He's currently a lecturer in the Leeds campus of Richmond, the American International University. So, so if you like his style of writing, you can of course search pen and sword for other works that he has written. The book is 197 pages long, and as you can probably see, it's quite small print. There are also illustrations as well. And the book is split into seven chapters and has a conclusion, Heroes No More. If you are interested in this book, check the link below. Moving on, the next book I have selected to educate ourselves on is A Dark History of Tea, and that is by Seren Charrington Hollins. Britain is a nation of tea drinkers, and I think whenever we use the loose leaves or we pop a tea bag in the cup or mug, we don't often think about the history of tea, where it's come from, and everything that surrounded that history. And hopefully this book will inform us. On the back, it reads, lifts the caddy lid on the history of Britain's favourite drink, delves beneath the genteel facade of tea, looking beyond its self-satisfied ceremonies and traditions to reveal its murky and scandalous past. Embark on a fascinating journey, during which you'll visit the darkest corners of tea's global history, uncovering stories of greed, war, slavery and exploitation. So you see what I mean? All of these books that I've chosen are really filling in the gaps in knowledge that perhaps we didn't hear about when we were at school ourselves. 
I'm going to read you a little bit more information about this book. So A Dark History of Tea explores our long relationship with this most revered of hot beverages. Renowned food historian Seren Charrington Hollins digs into the history of one of the world's oldest drinks, tracing the significance of tea on the tables of both the wealthy and the working classes. This humble herbal infusion has been used in burial rituals and as a dowry payment for aristocrats. It has fueled wars, spelled fortunes and built empires, gradually forming an integral part of the cultural fabric of British life. This book delves into the distasteful history of a drink that is now considered to be unquestionably British. It tells a story of cruelty, slavery and illicit opium smuggling all practices that enable tea to flow into the cups of British society. The story of tea takes the reader on a fascinating journey through myth, fable and folklore. Through stories of swindling, adulteration, greed and war, learn of the importance of tea to the naval trade and how it spurred the first impulses of modern capitalism. Discover how tea played a part in the globalisation of the world economy. Scattered throughout this fascinating history are interesting facts about tea etiquette and tradition. Discover the link between tea and seduction and read about the illicit liaisons that occurred as a result of tea time meetings. This is an enjoyable roller coaster of dark discoveries that will cast away any thought of tea as something that merely accompanies breaks, sit downs, and biscuits. The Dark History of Tea is 170 pages long, and as you can see from here, the writing again is fairly small, and it does include illustrations. It's organized into 10 chapters, including witchcraft, scrying, and sorcery, the kill or cure tea debate, tea demand, opium, slums, and prostitutes. So as you can see, it's really all encompassing, and it will fill in the gaps of the history of one of our favorite drinks. Moving on. The last book I have for you is Sex and Sexuality in Stuart Britain by Andrea Zuvik. This book is going to be very interesting because one of the things we don't often hear about at school in the history books is about sex and sexuality in period history. This of course is covering the Stuart period and I can't wait to see uh, what this is all about. I did review one a while ago about Victorian sex and sexuality. It was incredibly interesting. So let's read a little bit about this book. It says, peek beneath the bedsheets of Stuart Britain in this frank, informative and captivating look at the sexual lives of the peoples of the British Isles between 1603 and 1714. Popular Stuart historian Andrea Zuvik, the 17th century lady, explores our ancestors, ingenious, surprising, bizarre and often entertaining beliefs and solutions to the challenges associated with maintaining a healthy sex life, along with the prevailing attitudes towards male and female sexual behaviour. The author sheds light not only on the saucy love lives of the royal Stuarts, but also on the dark underbelly of the Stuart era, with histories of prostitution, sexual violence, infanticide and sexual deviance. What was considered sexually attractive in Stuart Britain? At what ages would people be old enough for marriage? What were the penalties for adultery, incest and fornication? How did Stuart era peoples deal with infertility, sexually transmitted diseases and child mortality? Find out the answers to these questions and more. As fashion, food, science, art, medicine, magic, literature, love, politics, faith and superstition of the day are all examined leaving the reader with a new regard for the ingenuity and character of our 17th century and early 18th century ancestors. The book is 199 pages long, again quite small print, and it is organised into 15 chapters, including the anatomy of a Stuart era person, uh, virginity and premarital sex or fornication, uh, deviant sexual practices part one, and including same-sex relations. Um, deviant sexual practices part two, incest, bestiality and flagellation. Chapter 15 also covers sexually transmitted illnesses. So this book is really all encompassing. There are also some illustrations too. Um, so again, a really interesting book. All three of the books that I have chosen to show you and share with you today, like I said before, are all things that perhaps we didn't know, things that perhaps were not covered back when we were at school. So I implore you, please take a look at the links in the description box below um, and check out these amazing, wonderful books. Again, just for clarity, Pen and Sword did send me these books, 
but they did give me complete free choice in the books that I selected. So these really are books that interested me. These are books that piqued my interest and are ones that I cannot wait to learn more about. Thank you for watching this video. If you have enjoyed it, then please give it a big old thumbs up. Don't forget to share on social media and also do hit the bell so that you know whenever I upload a new video. Also, please do remember to subscribe to the channel. So from me in Shropshire, to you all and goodbye.